What is up my friends? Welcome back to another video. And today we are going to be talking about chords and how to actually play chords in a very simple way. Because a lot of the times there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube talking about how to play like super complex stuff, how to play these chord structures that just seem out of our reach. But none of that really matters unless we have a foundational grasp on how to play basic triads in a very simple and efficient manner. So today we're gonna to talk about a fingering system that you can use uh, that's based in a classical tradition. Um, so you can really start to improve your playing uh, right away and make sure you have the foundation set. So before we really get into that though, I wanna give you a free guide for watching this video and I call it playing piano with confidence. And this is a guide that really I put together because people were asking me, what are some fundamental techniques that I really need to know in order to make sure that I'm covered and I'm improving in the right direction and I know what to do. So um, I, I wanted to put this together that's super streamlined. It'll tell you everything you need to know, I'll cover some five basic concepts. And I promise you, if you work on those and really try to um, improve every single day that you will see results. Um, and, and I wanna give you that framework absolutely free. So if you click the link in the box below, it'll take you straight there. And let's jump into triads. How do we actually play triads? So basically a triad is a three note chord and it's especially useful because as piano players, we're playing triads all the time, but usually in some sort of extended positions and all of that. But a basic triad is just a three note chord. So how do we do that? Well, if you look at this chart on the left, it basically gives us these right hand and left hand fingerings with different positions like root position, first inversion and second inversion. And then there's another root position up an octave. And just as a quick recap, the thumbs are finger one of each hand, then finger twos are the index fingers, finger threes are the middle fingers, finger fours are the ring fingers, and finger fives are the pinkies. Now, this is useful to know because of the fingering chart. So if you look at the root position for the right hand, it's one, three, five. So for simplicity's sake, let's use a C major chord, C major triad. So one, three, five. And then we're going to go to the first inversion by moving the C up an octave. And we're going to use one, two, five for this one. Now we're going to use two in the middle because this G is actually closer to the E, right? So if I was to use three, it would feel a little more awkward. And there's a bit more of an extra stretch between the third and the fifth finger. So what I want to do is use finger two here. And then for the next one, I move the E to the top to get the second inversion. And now we have one, three, five, right? And then we do this one more time, move the G up an octave. And we get to the next root position just like this. So if I play that a little faster, all together, it sounds like this. Let's also play the chords in a broken form as well from bottom to top. Okay, let's do the same for the left hand. So left hand starts off as five, three, one as well. First inversion is also five, three, one. Then the second inversion is five, two, one. Notice how the two in the middle is closer to the thumb, right? The C is really close to the E. So that's why we use finger two instead of finger three there. And then we move up one more time to get to the root position. Then we go back down. Let's do that in broken form as well. Okay. And the great news is this fingering chart applies to every single key, no matter what key it is, right? So if it's C major, if it's E minor, if it's F sharp major, if it's A flat minor, the fingering chart will apply to every single one of those keys. So no matter what, if I'm playing a root position triad, I'm going to use one, three, five. Right? And what, no matter what, in first inversion for the right hand, I'm going to do one, two, five every time. And so on and so forth, and vice versa for the left hand. So this is great news because once you are used to playing um, this in one key, then you can apply the exact same fingering to every single key, you know, no matter what it is. 
and it stays consistent throughout. Now, that's not the case for scales, though, because scales, you know, the way they're kind of uh, put together, the way uh, you know the black notes and white notes kind of interact with one another in a particular order, that can influence the fingering pattern. But for chords, uh, this same fingering pattern um, applies for every single key. So if you kind of keep in mind these fingerings, making sure the first inversion in the right hand is one, two, five, and the second inversion in the left hand is uh, one, two, five or five, two, one, then you're pretty much set to go. And you can practice your chords in every single key using these fingerings. So hopefully that makes sense. It's a very simple thing to keep in mind, but, uh, I don't think a lot of people really talk about this, um, because they like to talk about super advanced stuff and more complicated things, but we know the foundations are very, very important. So I wanted to cover it in this video and uh, hopefully it gives you a sense of clarity for basic triad fingerings. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in more fundamentals, again, I wanna give you that free guide called Playing Piano with Confidence. It goes over a few things that uh, will really help you benefit your piano skills if you are looking to take them to the next level and play with smoothness and ease and fluidity. These are fundamental concepts you need to know in order to make sure that you're playing properly. So uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video and take care. Bye-bye.